The Pelicans showed you exactly who they are in that closer than it should have been win over the Washington Wizards. Let's look at the good, Zion dominating, and the bad, a blown 20-point lead, and ask the question, is it a good or bad thing that the bench has been this key for the New Orleans Pelicans? Let's break it down in a Thursday episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcasts and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider Credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, here with y'all on a Thursday, day after the Pelicans beat the Washington Wizards 133-126, closer than it should have been, certainly, but a win a win here. I want to look at this one because as I said in the open, you know, this team just showed you who they are. The Pelicans just showed you exactly who they are. We should believe that, right? Like that's the quote. That's the Maya Angelou quote. When people show you who, uh, when people show you who they are, believe them the first time. Okay. We should believe This is who the Pelicans are. You're capable of kind of gutting out these wins, getting a big lead. They led by more than 20 or 20 or more in this game. The stats for the game are messed up, by the way. And blew it in the third quarter when the starters looked clunky again. So let's break down everything that happened in here because I think we have enough data to just basically say, like, this team is this. And I think that's worth keeping in mind as we look towards the rest of the season and go into the all-star break here. Of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen. Today and every day, we're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, breaking down everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast, and on YouTube, we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So, right, like that's the story here, I thought. The Pelicans had a big lead. They looked dominant beating up on a real bad team that didn't even have Kyle Kuzma playing. And then let that go completely in the third quarter, really at the end of the first half. They did not close the first half well. Saw Washington creep back in, hit a shot right at the buzzer to pull within eight, and then took the lead in the second half when the starters looked clunky. We went over some of this in yesterday's show, talking about some good things for the Pelicans and some bad things. And one of the bad things was the starters still have not played well with each other. And while the starters in this game didn't look particularly great, right? Three of your four were a negative and one of them, Zion, was a zero, right? The only one that was a positive here was Herb Jones in terms of plus minus. It was your bench, and we'll get into Najee Marshall, Jose Alvarado, Trey Murphy, because they were kind of the heroes of this game for a little bit more in the next segment here. And I want to ask, is that a good or bad thing? But that's the story here, right? They blew this lead again. We've seen them do this before because coming out in the third quarter, the starters are easy to defend because there's just no cohesiveness to this team. This is who this this Pelicans team is, right? We'll, We'll touch more on that coming up in the next segment here. I want to talk about small ball, though. Because the Pelicans running that small ball lineup out there of Zion Williamson, and they did this at the end of the first quarter going into the second. They did it in the fourth quarter, and that's where they won the game. It was that small ball lineup with Zion playing the five, playing center, where they just torched, absolutely torched. And I won't have the data until tomorrow, and I'll try and read it on Friday's show for y'all, that those lineups just killed, right? Zion scored a quick 10 points right away in the second period to really kind of put the Pelicans ahead. They eviscerated the Wizards for a period of time. They went on a 14-0 run playing small ball, right? It was Zion Williamson. It was Jose Alvarado. It was Najee Marshall. That you had Trey Murphy out there too. And was it CJ? I can't forget the other guy. And again, I don't have the lineup data in front of me. Just went small ball. Zion at the five, right? Basically, no Valanciunas, no Larry Nance Jr. They switched everything 
everything, so it allowed them to dominate defensively. They forced the Washington Wizards into 18 turnovers. They only had two themselves here. It let them get out and run and just get easy points in transition. The court was spaced enough for Zion to just take over and go and do his thing. You have hustle from guys like Najee Marshall, Jose Alvarado. Again, more on them in the next segment here. And it allowed the Pelicans to surge to a big lead despite not shooting a ton of threes, just 32 on the night. That's a low number, right? Only made 10 of them. That's 31.3%. The Washington Wizards, by the way, hit 20 of theirs, right? That's a 30-point swing right there when it comes to three points. And the Pelicans still managed to get this win partially because of Zion attacking the basket and putting pressure on the defense. He scored in the paint and looked dominant. It was 36 points for New Orleans. uh, Sorry, for Zion Williamson. And again, because the NBA stats website is down right now, I don't have the numbers here for some of this, but the points in the paint were just massively in favor of the Pelicans in this one, I believe. So when you looked at this and looked at how they dominated here, points in the paint, 72 for New Orleans, 44 for the Washington Wizards, right? Like that'll overcome that 30 point difference in terms of three point shooting. So you saw how dominant this team could be when they kind of use their players in the right way. Look, you got to give credit to Willie Green. I saw a lot of people killing him after the game, and I'm not saying whether he's good or bad here, but they haven't done a ton of small ball Zion at the five lineups. They did in this game, and it absolutely worked. It was the right thing to go to. This goes back to what I was talking about earlier of this team is who we think they are, who they've shown us to be, right? You know, I've said don't trade Jonas Valanciunas, you need him to help you kind of get some of these wins, and he helped them against the Washington Wizards earlier in the year, right? But in this game, he was unplayable for him. He was bad in this one, I thought, and not very useful. Same for Larry Nance Jr., who I thought also struggled. The center spot here was not great for New Orleans. Well, that's why at the trade deadline, they were looking to upgrade that. You know, do you want more data? Do you need more data here? Or is it, you? we just know this now. That's why they'll restart those trade talks in the off season and look to address the center spot. Now, I said don't trade him because I don't think there was a guy available at the trade deadline that would actually have made them better. But you can see it's something they need to address long term. Uh, long term. And I've said as much. So again, it goes to what I said in the beginning of the show on the open here, right? The Pelicans showed you exactly who they are. There's a talented team here that due to some clunkiness is being held back and doesn't get to play their best basketball all the time. There you go. But when they were, when they played small ball, they killed it, killed it. We want to see more of that. The problem is you can't do that all the time. It works against the Wizards. It won't work against a lot of other teams. So you have to kind of find the right balance with all of that. Meaning you need another center that doesn't necessarily get played off of the court. Larry can hold his own as much as he can. And he, you know, has been good this season. But I don't know if that's exactly the long-term starting answer for this Pelicans team. So, you know, it kind of leaves us where we thought they were, right? Let's get back into the starters and stuff with that, though, because bad energy to start this game closer than it should have been. You needed a spark off the bench yet again. They got it. Is that sustainable? Is that what you want? Let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is brought to you by Robinhood. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. The offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info here claim as of q1 2024 validated by radius global market research investing involves risk including loss limitations apply to iras and 401ks three percent match requires Robinhood gold for one year from the date of the first three percent match must keep Robinhood ira for five years three percent matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions Robinhood ira available to u.s customers in good standing Robinhood financial llc member sipc is a registered broker dealer.
And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, breaking down everything you want to know about this team. Become an everydayer. Listen Monday through Friday to Locked On Pelicans. Never miss an episode because then you'd really know who this team is, right? We've talked about this. The things we talked about in that first segment are not surprising. The stuff we're going to talk about right here, right now, not surprising either. So subscribe wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube. Become an everyday or listen Monday through Friday. Or if you listen one day a week, listen two days a week. Or just up it just a little bit and comment down below on YouTube. That helps support the channel. Keep it sit free in five days a week for y'all. If you have questions about what you want to see talked about next week, we got a little bit of a break because of All-Star Weekend coming up this weekend. Let me know in the comments down below. Might get answered on the show. Now, for your second listen, it's a channel Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels. App Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Okay. Second part of this, right? Third quarter struggles. Why? Why is this happening? The starters have not been good. The starters have a negative net rating on the season, but particularly the starters in the second half of games have looked bad. They have really, really struggled. I think there's a couple of reasons for this. We've gone over those if you're an everydayer of the show here. One of it is I don't think they shoot enough threes. I don't think the court is spaced well. Part of it is the center position too being a little bit clunky with this team and just kind of a lack of like, what do we do here, right? What's the hierarchy I do think is important for this team? And they don't necessarily have that. So you get into these situations where you come out in these third quarters and that catches up to you, right? Teams make adjustments at halftime, even though they don't really, even the Pelicans don't, no one really makes true huge adjustments or anything like that. In-game adjustments, yeah, but it's not like you come out with a completely different game plan at halftime. Though the Pelicans have tried doing some of that, I guess, with Larry Nance Jr. starting in second halves for a little bit that didn't work. So, you know... That catches up to you because this team just becomes easier to defend. You just know what to do, right? Like, it's pretty straightforward here. And so you see that a lot, and this team gets behind again because of the clunkiness of fit and lack of cohesion on offense. And then it requires the bench mob coming in and bringing a spark. Enter Jose Alvarado. Enter Najee Marshall. We're going to sing their praises in this segment because they were big yet again. You cannot keep relying, though, on your bench to win the game for you, to bring that energy, right? You even saw it in the first half. The first quarter, this team looked a little bit sluggish. They didn't look great. They looked like they just didn't have the right kind of energy. Like maybe, I don't know, they were out at Mardi Gras yesterday on Tuesday, depending on when you're listening to this. They flew in late Monday night. They could have gone out and partied on Tuesday. Now, I don't know if they did. I'm not accusing anyone of that, but it's similar to the letdown in LA. Had a night off, not uh, he had a night free in LA before a game that can be dangerous here, you know. So for your bench to, I don't know why some noise just started playing here. Okay, thank you. Um, so for your bench to come in and have Najee Marshall be a plus twenty, Jose Alvarado be a plus seventeen, Trey Murphy be a plus fifteen. Now they played around Zion Williamson, of course. You can't keep relying on that, right? Look, look, Najee Marshall was great in this game. Six of eight from the field, one of three from deep. You know, gave you two rebounds and assists, three steals. He he played exceptionally well. Jose Alvarado, three of seven, right? Um, so Najee had 13 points. Jose had seven points on seven shots. That's not a great number. 0 for four from three, but gave you three rebounds, three assists, two steals. They played exceptionally well, and you're relying on them to do that game in, game out. They are delivering. Najee has been very good for the past handful of games. I truly mean that. So has Jose. They keep constantly proving me wrong. But at a certain point, it's going to come catch up to you where your starters don't bring it or they're clunky and it just doesn't work. And then you rely and put in Jose early, put in Najee early to kind of uplift your team. And look, there's a reason they're on minimum contracts. Now, they'll get bigger contracts next, but there are limitations to these players. And so... When that catches up to you, you're going to lose that game. You're going to lose that game. Now, you're lucky this was against the Washington Wizards, against a better team, and maybe an entirely different story, right? Also, is it if Denny Avija doesn't go for 43, which is almost like 20 points more than his previous career high, which was set the other night, that's probably going to be a little bit better, I think. 
and you can kind of withstand that some. But you're also going to have games where your bench just can't bring it, right? Like against the San Antonio Spurs in a one-point win just a couple of games ago, five games ago now, Najee Marshall went one for six, right? It was a minus 19. Well, if he had that type of game, that type of performance here, you lose this game, right? Like that's the type of stuff that I don't know if you can totally rely on. Najee this season is shooting 38% from three. That's a great number, but he's a career 30.3% shooter. This is such an outlier of a number for him. Maybe he's improved, maybe not, but you get what I'm saying. You're relying on those guys to essentially win you games. And I think that's very dangerous because as we talked about in the show the other day, the way this is supposed to work, especially on a team that's like in playoff contention, is your starters are supposed to get you a solid lead. Your bench can add on to it a little bit, just not really lose it or only lose it a little bit would be good too. And then your starters come back in, close the game out, slam the door, and that's what happens here. But that's not what's going on here. That's not good. That's not sustainable. So when we talked about this is who the Pelicans are, this is why they struggle against some of these top teams, I think, right? You can do this against bad teams. You can get away with this against bad teams. You can't do that against good teams. And that's while while they've gotten some good wins. And again, the stats and numbers and the advanced metrics and all that show this team isn't bad. And I agree with that. And we've said that. There's also some limitations here. That's why you're seeing it. And that's not a great situation uh, to to be in, right? When you look at their net rating on the season, they have a negative net rating when Brandon Ingram is no uh, is on the court. Same for Zion Williamson, right? Like that, those numbers aren't good, and that's not necessarily what you what you want, right? Like that's a bad thing. Of the starters, the only one that has a positive net rating, basically, when he's on the court, is Herb Jones. That's very damning. I think, and a big time concern. So figuring that out, you're going to have to wait till the off season, right? Or really change the style of play as we talked about in yesterday's show, I think can do that. But again, everything we talked about in yesterday's show came true in this one. When they ran points Zion, things went really well. Right now, Brandon Ingram was getting to his spots and doing his thing, and I was happy to see, you know, an efficient scoring game overall from him here. 18 points on 12 shot attempts is good, but he took just two threes, or sorry, three threes, and he hit back-to-back ones. They need more of that, right? You can see that what they're doing works against these bad teams, doesn't totally work against some of these good teams, and it's leading to problems, right? He was a minus 18 on the night in 34 minutes. It's not going to work. That's not going to work, right? Zion being a zero is not going to work. Your bench running the way that they did, which was a shorter rotation. Uh, We'll get into Hawkins in the next segment. I do want to touch on that. That's important. Um, Absolutely, it's just not the way to go. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments down below. They got to figure out the starters if you want to be a true title contender because you're not going to win an NBA title or even a potential playoff series if this is the case because you're going to get run out and lose those starter minutes and that's not a thing that's going to be sustainable for you and you're going to lose if that's the case. Really as simple as that. Glad they're getting these wins now. Don't get me wrong. I'm thrilled with the play of Najee Marshall and Jose Alvarado. They've been almost MVPs for this team over a stretch, I think. But you can't keep doing this. You're going to lose games if that's the case. Coming up next, let's look at why didn't Jordan Hawkins play? If Dyson Daniels isn't playing, like why, why is he not in the rotation here? Let's talk about that in relation to this game in particular. Come up here next in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about Hungry Root. Hungry Root is your partner in healthy living. It's the easiest way to get fresh, high-quality groceries and simple, healthy recipes delivered to your door. All you do is take a fun, short quiz, and Hungry Root will get to know your personal health goals, what you like to eat, the kitchen appliances you use, and more. And then they're going to build a personalized cart with all your grocery needs for the week and give you delicious recipe recommendations to put those groceries to good use. They're going to make grocery recommendations based off your personal taste, but each order is fully customizable. You can take their suggestions or choose anything you want high quality meats and seafood pantry staples healthy snacks sweets ready to eat meals and so much more think about all that time you're going to save by not doing meal planning meal prepping grocery shopping a couple hours a week what would you do with that time and everything from hungry root falls a simple standard it's got to taste good be quick to make and contain whole trusted ingredients to save hours right now hungry root is offering locked on pelicans listeners 40 percent off your first delivery and free veggies for life 
Just go to hungryroot.com slash locked on and get 40% off your first delivery and get your free veggies. That's hungryroot.com slash locked on. Don't forget to use our link so they know we sent you. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast, breaking down everything you want to know about this team. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Be coming every day. Listen Monday through Friday to Locked On Pelicans. Support the channel by commenting down below and let me know what you want to hear next week. Tomorrow's show, we're going to look at the three biggest kind of questions we want to see answered going forward for this Pelicans team. It'll probably involve the topics we've talked about the past couple of days here on Locked On Pelicans. Look at that. Like a cohesive show over multiple days. We know what we're doing here. Okay. So, Jordan Hawkins, why don't you play? Let's start with that. I have a couple like random notes and things I want to talk about with this game, but this is uh, an interesting one, right? Like no Dyson Daniels here. So you're losing a man in the rotation. There's more minutes to go around, but no Jordan Hawkins who seems to be kind of in the doghouse here for Willie Green yet again. In general, yeah, I want to see Hawkins playing. In general, I want to see Hawkins playing, but I think this is also a bit of an outlier game where I don't have any issue with him not getting minutes. The Pelicans scored 133 points. Offense wasn't the problem in this one. Offense is often the problem for the New Orleans Pelicans. It was not in this game. It was getting stops. It was getting stops and limiting the Washington Wizards, right? Denny Avija scored 43 points. Jordan Hawkins was going to help with that, right? Corey Kispert had 20 points off the bench. Jordan Hawkins wasn't going to help with that whatsoever, right? They grabbed a number of offensive boards. Avija had five. Marvin Bagley, the third, had six. You know, Hawkins wasn't going to help with any of that. They needed to get stops, and that's something that the Pelicans were really struggling with. When it came to points off turnovers, right, the Wizards won that despite having far more turnovers than the New Orleans Pelicans did. They had 18, and it led to, and led to 21 points for New Orleans, Pelicans had just 10, led to 23 points. Sorry, I have that around. Uh, Pelicans had 10, and it led to 21 points off turnovers, right? Like, that battle is not going well for the New Orleans Pelicans there. Jordan Hawkins wasn't going to help with that. There are going to be other games where he's definitely going to be needed when shots aren't falling, when you need more spacing, when you need more offense. But Trey Murphy going 3 of 9 for 3, I'm okay with here, right? Like, again, you don't. There's not a magic number of shooting threes. It's who's taking those and how they're kind of impacting the offense. But also, if you're just able to get into the paint at will, like, you don't need to take threes. If you're going to score 72 points in the paint, go and score 72 points in the paint and, like, don't worry about it. Just keep doing that and hammering that point home. And the Pelicans doing that, I thought really just didn't mean they needed Jordan Hawkins in this one. There will be other games where you want to see that. Willie Green did say he's going to tighten the rotation up. It probably is going to mean more minutes for Najee Marshall, Jose Alvarado, Trey Murphy, Larry Nance Jr. And it doesn't sound like he's looking to add anyone to the rotation. So you're likely going to see a nine-man rotation while Dyson Daniels is out. I think that's somewhat fine. I don't know if that's like the entire approach here, but it's very clear that Hawkins is not going to be in the rotation just yet. This game, I don't have a problem with it given how it went. Other games, when you're not scoring 133, like some of the previous games where the Pelicans couldn't break 100 in back-to-back games, yeah, I'd like to see him playing, right? Like, that's, I think, going to be an important thing. But in this one, no, I don't really have an issue with that whatsoever. But this team still needs to kind of figure some things out, and there's kind of like bigger issues than me than why isn't the rookie playing here. You know, I think what you saw from this game is this team desperately needs the All-Star break. Hawkins is going to go play in the Rising Stars game. That's cool. Is anyone else participating in like anything over all-star break? You know, are they even going to be there? I'm sure CJ will, but it's Brandon Ingram going to be there. Is Zion Williamson going to be there? I think that's a team that could really just use some rest. Is Trey Murphy even going to be there? I think this is a team that just straight up needs a break. Go, go clear your mind a little bit. 
let the coaching staff watch some film, kind of game plan and try and make some adjustments. Come in and get a good practice or two before playing your next game. You're still at home. The stretch is going to be a little bit hard coming up. Don't get me wrong. But you at least come in and get some home games here. A back-to-back against Houston and Miami. And then you take on the Chicago Bulls before going on the road on a tough road trip between the Knicks and the Indiana Pacers. But then coming back home and then just having like a little bit of a break with things. So you have a chance to get some rest, a chance to get some things right. Houston is definitely going to be winnable. The Chicago Bulls is definitely going to be winnable too, but those are going to be tougher games than you realize. So we'll really get a good test for the Pelicans, I think, when they come back from the All-Star break. But boy, does this team feel like they need it a little bit. These past three wins, and look, they went 3-1 and on that road trip. That's great. You dominated the Clippers, looked great there. Lost in disappointing fashion to the Lakers. Struggled to close out Portland, who's basically a G League team. Struggled to beat Memphis, who's on a nine-game losing streak after that one. Eight going into it. They just snapped that uh, literally this night. That's great for them, but you, you couldn't clear 100 points there, and they started to come back into it. You had a dominant run over this Wizards team and then you couldn't close it out like none of that I think is particularly great and that's concerning figure some things out come back and let's see how this team closes over the all-star after the all-star break the final stretch one not, uh, stretch run not second half of the season but like about a third of the season or so it's gonna be really interesting to see what this team is capable of what they're able to do because they're a playoff team they're a good team Just how good are they and exactly what are the changes they're going to need to make and how drastic do those changes need to be over this offseason, I think, is what we're going to learn here. More on that in tomorrow's show, though, where we talk about kind of the biggest burning questions for this Pelicans team over the final stretch run here. That's what we're going to talk about in tomorrow's show. So be coming every day or so you never miss an episode. And that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison at Nola Jake on Twitter. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Be back with y'all tomorrow.